eyes on today. Good evening everyone and welcome to the launch of the Outside Locker Room TV show. My name is Jay Gibbons and I'll be your host and I'm joined by five time Premiership Brownlow medalist. I couldn't foot fit it all in there, Dip. Sorry, keep mate. Going, keep, keep going, keep going. Hall of Fame. By well, the great man yeah, Robert yeah, yeah. Dippiardo also known as AKA Dipper. Thanks for joining me, mate. Oh, Jake, how exciting is this? Uh, it's, a bit, it's been a long time coming, but now we've got our own TV show called Outside the Locker Room and we're going to talk about all subjects, but mainly about mental health and how we can help people, how we can inspire people, but looking uh, into the vaults of, uh, of some great players in the past and people of the past. Yeah, we certainly are. Just on that, we're going to be, uh, later on, a special guest will be Johnny Platt. Yeah, the, the rat. Yours. Yeah, the rat. Uh, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, yeah. on, on screen because uh, I, I know he's still got his hair. I just want to <laughs> find out about that hair of yours because everyone knew about Johnny Platt, the way that he played, but yeah. also that hair was everywhere. Okay. We're joined by a local legend, Christy Nia, who's actually a part Part of our program over in Western Australia. Yeah, she, she's done a great job. Oh, she's done she? a fantastic job. So she'll be joining us very, very shortly in about 10 minutes, 5, it, 10 minutes it, time. So Christy or Kirsty? Oh, be careful what you say there. <laughs> be careful what you say there, mate. I always get it wrong. Sorry, Christy. <laughs> so we'll be uh, we're jumping across to her soon as our local legend. Now, that's we, we want to make that every week part of a yeah, segment. So absolutely. if you're out there watching and you want to jump on and become a local legend, jump on our website and then you know send us a message and you want to be a part of the show. We'll, yeah. we'll lovely to have you on. As well. Now, uh, it's really new for us uh, because this is obviously our first time uh, uh, with our new show. But uh, looking around, we've, uh, we've got people everywhere here. We've got okay. new equipment. Uh, so if we are fumbling a little bit, well, you know, it's our first yeah. day. But anyway, That's right. I hope you can join us uh, uh, throughout uh, the year. Mm. And uh, Jake, you must be very proud of what you started five years ago. And all of a sudden, we've got our own new TV show. Yeah, it's exciting, Dib. I'm, you know, we're thinking about today, and actually, the purpose of putting this station together during this difficult time of COVID nineteen. You know, yeah. We, us sporting communities, we, we stopped two months ago. Right now, I said, right now, I should be going into round two, round three of my football yeah. season. And so, this is a way for us to reach out, and hopefully, everyone's uh, watching at home. Uh, but also, we'll share some messages around uh, how to support yourselves and your friends and family along yeah. the way as well. And how has changed because of the fact that uh, yeah, there's no sport, there's just not footy. I mean, there's, there's no uh, sport at all yeah. around the world, not just here in Australia. This is a, a worldwide phenomenon. But uh, it's interesting because you know, how much you miss the, the connection with people. That was, uh, that's what it's all about. And yeah. that's one thing I, I love about playing the game was the fact that uh, the connection, and we're going to catch up with a great mate of mine, on the field, but also off the field, Johnny Platten, but the connection that you have with, uh, uh, with uh, people off the field as well. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what this TV show's about. And for us who have played the game at the highest yeah. level, Dip, although I didn't get the opportunity, mate, like you have, no, no, no. we certainly, uh, we've certainly have been there and trained our, our backsides off to become AFL yeah. players. So we're excited to share with this uh, episode and show with you all. Yeah. And let's just go through through the segments tonight of what we're okay. going to So we'll touch on with uh, local legend moving forward. We're also going to have our fitness expert, Andy Anderson. Now, well, he uh, is the CEO and the founder of Ultimate U. And Absolutely. Thanks to Andy for putting up this space here tonight, which is fantastic as well. So he'll join us a little bit later on to give us some fitness tips. He's really good. This is a fit but mindset. Yeah. Uh, you know, and lately that uh, everyone's been at home, you know, uh, in lockdown, you know, how's the mind going? Because uh, a lot of people out there aren't used to being at home with a family, the kids running around and, and no job. I mean, you know, five weeks ago, we all had jobs. Uh, yeah. You know, even personally, I've lost a lot of work myself. And uh, yeah. But uh, we'll be able to talk about that. Yeah, Andy will cover off on the number one mindset tip for tonight. He'll be on yeah. the show every week. Yeah, so great. expect to see him a lot. And then move forward, we'll have Dipper's Vault. Now, I've got something very, very <laughs> special for you all tonight. A segment Dipper's Vault. So Dipper asked him during the day yesterday, who's the top five players that he's played on? And he's, uh, he's made them public tonight. So. Well, the thing about that, I mean, I started in 1975 and finished in 1991. So that's a long, long career. But back in the 75, I played against, you know, as Jesse Linko, Malcolm Blythe, all these great players. But uh, in, in the 80s, there were great times, obviously, the Hawthorne, 
Um, the Hawks had a great uh, time in the 80s, but mm. uh, I came up against some great players. But the, the beauty about that, uh, uh, um, Jake, is the fact that we used to play each other twice or maybe three or four times a year. Mm -hmm. You knew who you were going to play against. And it was me versus him and vice versa. And none of us came off the ground. We That's just right. wanted to make sure that... And everyone knew who played on who. Yeah, so we look forward to sharing that with all Dippers Vol. Where every week he'll, we'll recap the old days a little bit. We'll tap into yeah, Dippers' journey. Yeah, the old days, eh? Uh, but the first one will be his top five plays that he's played on throughout his career. Then we'll get a special guest who's Johnny Platten. He'll jump on for 10 minutes and we'll talk more about his career, but also his, his recent challenges with his own uh, mental health ch ch with concussion. Yeah, concussion. Um, like, uh, you know, Johnny was just a terrific hard player, but... Uh, a little yeah. rover, you know, that's yeah, what he yeah. was, always under the packs. But, you know, he's been suffering uh, with uh, concussion issues, but we'll have a chat to him about that. Yeah, and then also, everyone watching this video now at home, please feel free to leave your questions below. Uh, whether yeah. you watch this on Facebook or YouTube, because at the very end, we're going to take a, like a one, two minute break, and we're going to pick a few questions that we're going to ask Dipper and myself. Uh, so please feel free, leave your comments below. At the very end, we'll, uh, we'll cover them off. Are you nervous, Dip? No, I'm not nervous, but this social media is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> eh? So in Facebook land or uh, uh, YouTube land, I mean, you normally sort of uh, watch replays or whatever, but you're never sort of live out there. <laughs> if you've got any questions regarding anything, yep. please don't hesitate and ask us, please. So let's just jump to a quick break now. Now, what is our locker room and what do we do? So we're a welfare and education program for community sporting clubs and schools around Australia and we're just going to jump to a quick video now which shows some of the some of our team out in the community uh, I think it's a Surrey Hills football club uh, where we run one of our education sessions and we'll be right back after this video. If you start that conversation through the text message, it might lead to an actual conversation in, in, in person. Driving in the car is one of the best ways to have a conversation. They've now opened up to you. What's your role that they've opened up? What's the step forward and the, and the motions forward from there? All right, you guys get 60 seconds. What is your role from here? Do you want to have a quick beer and have a chat about something instead of just asking a question, sort of bring a solution? Let them know that they can always talk to you. Tell them something about you. So when people have bad temper or people lash out, it's usually because they're hurting inside. And as outside the locker room, we're here as a welfare program that you can message us, message Cindy, and Cindy will give you the tips and tricks and, and, and the steps forward to be able to help that person. If someone opens up to you, listen to hear them, don't listen to respond. Don't fix their problem, just hear them out. And that could be one of the greatest things you ever do. So if you take nothing away from tonight, take the, the community that you're in at the moment in terms of Surrey Park Football Club and, and just acknowledge the fact that you're around a, a club that had outside the locker room here the Mental Health Foundation, they're obviously caring about that side of things. And you guys have stuck around. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts for having us here. We'll, we'll be back and, and we'll see you later on in the year. And good luck. If you want to transfer, let me know. Just got to reach out. It's the very first talking point, starting point. And once you hit that point, everything's going forward from there. So thanks, boys. And welcome back guys, so there you have it, that's our locker room in the community now. We just want you to bear with us for about two minutes while we set up our next guest, which is Christy Ania, and she's one of our local legends over there in Western Australia. So bear with us, we take a quick break, we'll set Christy up and we'll come right back. Tell your friends about us.
And welcome back. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for hanging in there while we set it up. Our local legend, Christy and Nia. Now, I'm just going to go through a little bit of a bio. She grew up in country Western Australia, a place called Narragin. And her and her family have been great supportive of our sort of locker room over there in Western Australia. And she's been a, a pivotal reason as to why our program is so so great over in, over in Perth and Western Australia as well. She's a former Perth Football Club director in the community engagement and both these roles at Perth Footy Club and Subiaco Football Club as she's a director today uh, are volunteer positions. She her education, women in sport, boardroom leadership. I hope I got that right Chris, you can, you can fix me uh, if, I, if I didn't. She works, her, her full-time job is actually a community engagement consultant with HBF and she helps us with the tackling suicide uh, game that we run annually over in, in Perth in Western Australia, which we're very grateful for. So thanks for joining us, Christy. Really appreciate it via Zoom. Hi, guys. How Unbelievable. How what a wrap-up that is, eh? Hello, Christy. <laughs> Hello. I can't see you, so I'm just imagining what you look like. That's all right. That's all right. Again, what you... I gave you a bigger rap sheet, um, <laughs> rap sheet than Dipper. <laughs> I've already dropped the bomb already. No, that's you right, mate. A, 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 um, a rap sheet bigger than Dipper, which yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure... Well, well as it. you know, Jake, if it wasn't for this young lady, um, uh, OTLR wouldn't be in Perth as strong as it is today. I just asked you, Christy, um, which I normally call you Kirsty, so it's actually Christy. Um, <laughs> how did uh, OTLR you know, arrive in Perth? Uh, when I was at the Perth Footy Club, um, we were quite conscious of a couple of our young players um, maybe struggling a little bit, adjusting to moving to Perth. There were a few country kids um, just being good humans, good players, good um, students, good uh, employees, and just struggling a little bit. So uh, I was tasked with the, the job to find a, a mental health program that we thought could support not only those boys but um, the whole club. Uh, I spoke to uh, the Football Commission, which is our governing body here in Western Australia, and actually hadn't found anything um, as yet to to support players. So it was a really, it was just a Google. Um, and I ended up uh, with Jake's website and, and I remember seeing him on 60 Minutes and, and we spoke uh, just on the phone in length probably for nearly an hour in my driveway and, and then a uh, conference call with him uh, with the footy club and then Jake flew over about a week later. We had a session uh, with our whole club, which was about 65 guys, and I knew right there and then with the window, you could hear a pin drop, and, and I knew that we had the right guy. And and um, those two young players that we were worried about actually signed up um, with Jake that night to get a um, to have a mental health plan. So we knew we were in good hands with Jake, and, and that's why I've been such a supporter for it's so a, long. It's a great story that Jake tells, isn't it? Mm. Uh, so I've uh, I've heard of. Yep. A thousand times, I could actually tell your story, but I, I love hearing you speak because you're very passionate about what you, what you talk about, and obviously uh, Christy and the club found that out as well. Um, yeah, life changed, hasn't it, the last month or so? Uh, how's football world over there uh, with COV over there? Oh, we're pretty confident. Um, I guess you guys hear um, the news over there of uh, how well WA is managing um, the pandemic. And I think we've had one case this week, um, new active case. So uh, it's probably the first time in our lives Perth's been, Perth people are happy about being the most um, remote city in the world. But yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're confident um, as as a, as a football league that we'll be back. Um, I hope in June, we, we don't quite know yet, but um, we're certainly from the, the Subiaco Footy Club point of view, uh, we're going to get back out there and and um, and hopefully have a full season. And on that point, I mean, how the club uh, is handled with the players? I mean, the, the stresses of, of not, you know, finances and the supporters and the players themselves. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, they're a pretty resilient bunch. They're um, they're very professional. Our boys and uh, our coach has been um, in contact with them all the time. They're having um, weekly Zoom meetings. Uh, they've got their own training program to do um, themselves and then they do meet up with another guy from their pod and they do some training together. Uh, we always have outside the locker room if, if they're struggling with anything or they need any support. But um, as players, they just, they just can't wait to get back out there. Um, we were so close to, to starting the year and, and now we're on hold, but we're really excited for um, the guys to come back. So we'll, we'll just explain a little bit what your role is specifically at the club, Christy, in community. Uh, yeah, community engagement director. So um, we, clubs in Western Australian Football League, and, and I'm sure all leagues across Australia understand that they're they're a vital part of the community, and and they should be giving back to the community. It's not it isn't just a sport anymore. It's um, yeah. it's about who comes through the club, 
and and if they leave the club a better person. So uh, right at the moment, we're looking into uh, starting a foundation, the Subiaco Footy Club Foundation, so we can support um, probably four different types of issues in the community. Um, we want that to be uh, to be the forefront, and and it's like probably a bit selfish on my part without any football community engagements become uh, the forefront of our minds at the club so um, it's about uh, in being in touch with our community and making sure that um, it's a safe place to be and, and we want people to come and and play footy and, and watch footy and, um, and and enjoy the 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 great social aspect as well as the you know great for your mental health as well so, so just on that with leads us a perfect segue dipper into our and you'll well, special event of the year. Is there any chance of you showing up next year? No, well, I, I, I was crook last year. I was really crook. Yeah, but we talk about our special event uh, every year in Western Australia, which uh, uh, Christy has really put a, a stamp on it. Yeah. And, and that is the tackling suicide game. We've got ex players from both we do. West Coast. There's a video on now. Yeah, okay. West Coast, West Coast yeah. and Eagles players. I'm uh, sorry, Eagles and uh, Frio yeah. boys uh, put their hands up and. Uh, yeah, well, I will, I will rock up one day. Yeah. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> it, it's a fantastic day, and Christy, this is Christy's baby. Yeah, in, it is. In Western Australia, and she came to us with the idea, and uh, we had a Perth Footy Club, you know, the two, first two years, and now, you know, before COVID hit, we were going to have it at Subiaco Football Club, but we will be holding it at the end of this year, hopefully, once footy comes back. And Christy, we can't thank you enough. Yeah, she's a ripper, isn't she? Eh? And you love your footy, don't you, eh? I do love my footy. Yeah, yeah, I do love my footy. So yep. who do you break for? Uh, Fremantle. Yeah, and uh, who's your favourite player? <laughs> oh. oh, we know who it is. Come on. <laughs> uh, well, of course it's five. Has to be five. But Fifi! Troy Cook. Is, uh, <laughs> have you met? Have you met that? No, no, no. I haven't. No. Oh, but Cook is my Cook is my favourite oh, of all right. time. But um, yeah, certainly um, five's pretty amazing. Uh, I'll Can you sum five up, up in one word? One word to sum that five. What would you say? Okay, is that a the PG? You want or? you want me to say something um, rude, I guess, or um, not rude. Um, not, not rude. Like, <laughs> um, I've been thinking about this because I, I knew I knew this would be a, a question, but I think he he's damaging. Damaging. Whether, damaging. I like that. Yeah. I like that word. Damaging. Yeah. <laughs> the sure not hot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I should... if I played against a, a bloke with a man bun, I would just rip his hair out. I would. <laughs> now, what a, what you a had a mullet. Hey, what about your mullet? Yeah, the mullets were in, not hair bun. <laughs> hair buns aren't in. Fifey, what are you doing? What are you doing anyway? Now, we love watching him play. He's a, he's a ripper player. And um, how's Perth handling uh, uh, no football around the town? You know, people are people getting a bit anxious? Uh, I think um, everyone sold out of jigsaw puzzles. Um, <laughs> Everyone's pretty bored over here. Um, it, it, because we've, we've never not been without it, it is, it is a real weird, really weird, weird situation to be in. Even, you know, Friday night footy, it's, it's on the TV in the background and, and you get on with your life. But yeah. um, people are really missing it, but it's, it's just an accumulation of not being able to go to the pub and have a beer and watch the footy. Or um, it's a, such a social thing to do that, you know, we're even having Zoom meetings for our board meetings, you know, that's, mm, that's yeah. so unheard of. So a, um, Perth's very, very um, much a football state and uh, we certainly miss a lot. That's and just so for, uh, uh, before we let you go, the connection around the football club, I mean, how important yeah. it is it for, uh, you know, the Waffle League boys to uh, you know, keep around a footy club the way you oh, see it? Yeah. Um, it's they spend i mean at our club they're training th three nights a week and and it's every saturday um or a sunday potentially um it's it's, it's a lot of their life over over this period and, and there's only a short break sort of over christmas the we end the season and we, and we start doing pre-season pretty early so it's their whole life um um during winter especially and and it keeps them obviously keeps them fit but it, it keeps them around the players and um and their mates and and Super it's a massive part of yeah. that, and I know they're missing it terribly. Have you got but... a girls' team as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how's yeah. that going? How's that program going? Yeah, we've actually um, just become one club. So right. uh, we were two separate clubs, but now um, the Subi Women's, they're the Lions as well. They've um, sort of shelved their constitution and, and their their club, and they're, they're under our banner now. So we're really excited to, to be able to start <laughs> doing that also when, they, when the girls... Jake and I took a training session uh, just recently in Western Australia, and we'll talk about a little tour that we were there about a month ago before 
everything has happened. Uh, it was the first time I've ever trained girls and the guys together, and they were, mm. they were awesome. They were great. As they I said, the terrific. fastest growing sport in Australia, women's football. Yeah. And I know over in, yeah. uh, in Perth, they've got a great program with Subiaco, and they're a great club. So, Christy, finally, um, one question. Well, what's your dream career in sport? You and I have spoken about this a little bit, but where do you want to get to? Because you've been such an well, yeah. avid supporter of football. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, it was probably only five, probably four or five years ago that I decided it really dawned on me at a game um, at Subi Oval watching Fremantle that um, uh, footy, I love footy, footy's my life and, and that's where I want um, my career to be and, and everything that I do, training that I do, the courses that I do, obviously volunteering at Subi and, and I've been at Perth for three years is all about being in a football club in a in a uh, an exec sort of role capacity. So yep. certainly my club of choice would be Fremantle, but um, <laughs> if I got a chance to, to be at any of the of the AFL clubs, I'd love that. But certainly exec level at um, Fremantle is, is oh, the Oh, we can fight the up for you. I'll see what I can set up for you. Oh, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> hey. so what, what do you do? Don't give her his number. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's a ripper. She's, she's a star. What have you been able to do for outside the locker room? We thank you so much and, uh, and what you're doing in football over there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's get this uh, tackling suicide game up and running again. Yeah, well, we'd yeah. certainly be back. And once we can get on a plane again, Dip, and yes. get out of Victoria, we'll be, we'll be straight over there, Christy. So thanks again for everything you've done for our program and all the very best, and we'll catch up very soon. Well, thanks for what you guys do. I mean, without you, Jake, obviously, and, and Dipper, the support that you give, and, and Greg and the rest of the board, um, we, you know, we wouldn't have you. So... Um, it's quite easy for you to say, you know, thanks to me, but it's because of you guys that um, uh, we're really making a difference here in WA. So we love you over here. Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Good on you. See you, Dale. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. What a trooper, eh? Yeah, absolute trooper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's been a star for us in the program. She'll be continuing to be that. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and she knows her footy and she loves her footy and she's, she's passionate about what she's doing, but she was the one who really is, uh, uh, had laid down the the footpath for us in Perth. She certainly did, Dib. So what we're going to do now, we're going to another quick little ad break, yep. and then you're actually going to leave us quickly for a couple, a bit of a, a bit of a break. Grab a coffee, Dib, fill up your water bottle, yes. and Andy Anderson is going to join us after this break. But here's a quick little video about Andy and the great work he does in the fitness industry.
G'day everyone and welcome back and thank you so much for joining us tonight and don't forget to please leave your comments and questions below because at the very end Dipper and I are going to go through and pick a couple to answer. But the next segment I'm joined by the great man Andy Anderson and just a little bit of, a bit of a background about Andy, CEO of Fitness Network and Franchise uh, Ultimate New and thank you again Andy for donating space here tonight mate, really appreciate My that. Pleasure. International author, so we'll touch a little bit about your mm. book as well and the great work you're doing there and you've got your podcast host. Yeah, which I, I know you got Dipper a part of, so mm. sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, it's good to have you on board, mate. So we just wanted to get you in talk a little bit about fitness at this point in time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a bit Thank of you mindset. for having me. No, you're welcome. You've done a great job here, and I love everything you guys do, so you should be really proud of yourself, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here, so thank you. So tell us a little bit about the journey, Andy. Mm. What got you to here, uh, being yeah. involved with Ultimate New? And yeah. What do you do? Well, look, it's, it's been a long journey, and it's just started out of frustration. So I was frustrated with my weight long ago, my health, uh, my mindset. I went through a really challenging phase growing up and you know, you just get to a point sometimes where enough's enough. I know you've probably been there yourself and you think something's just gotta change. And the first step for me was fitness. So I knew that if I could shift my physical body and how I feel, mm. then my, men my mentality and mindset would shift as well. And everything else was sort of flowing after that. So that's sort of how I got into the, to the fitness game. And then, uh, and then I came up with the concept of Ultimate You, where we wanted to take a, a holistic approach with mindset, nutrition, and training, which were our three pillars of change. And, uh, and then Ultimate You was born. So since then, we've, uh, we've gone from one location to 17, and you know, you know, we've got some exciting things, the book, the TV show coming out, and we're just looking to help as many people as we can. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm. You know, you've done a terrific job. And we're in this moment now, COVID-19. I mm. know that everyone around us has been affected in some way, yeah. shape, or form. What advice can you give to anyone out there with their fitness? Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I mean, f first and foremost, don't use it as an excuse. I mean, it's easy to fall into a, into a, a negative pattern or sort of a, a bit of complacency. But even if you're just walking, even if you're just doing burpees or push-ups at home, mm -hmm. you can still do something. And, you know, we've put everything online right now with our fitness regime. But even if you, uh, you're you not with Ultimate You, you've got YouTube, you've got so many resources that you can utilize for home workouts. You really just have to keep active because there's a lot more at stake than just putting on a few kilos. As you know, it's about mental health and it's about how you feel every day, having a purpose and actually moving the body. So it's got a lot more to do with um, than just the look. Yeah, mm. definitely. And you spoke about mindset there, mate, about uh, mental health especially. Mm. We all know that no one ever said, no one walked out of the gym and said, mm. oh, I wish I didn't do that. That's right, they? 100%. You know, so a lot of time it's just getting started, getting out there and having that structure and that routine. Absolutely. And you know, if you aren't a part of a gym, like you said, there are mm. ways to get access to great online content. Yeah. At the and you guys are doing that? Yeah, 100%. So we've moved everything online. We do live classes every day. We've got our online portals, daily workouts, uh, leadership classes, mindset classes daily. Uh, nutrition classes and tips. We're running all our programs online. So we knew that we couldn't stop. Our clients needed us now more than ever. Yep. So we uh, pivoted quickly and, um, and we're doing everything we can to serve as many people as we can. Yep. Mindset. Mm. Yes. Give us a tip. Because every week you'll be joining us. Uh, Absolutely, so yeah. give us a mindset tip, mate. Well, me. look, I might give you three quickly. Go for it. All right, cool. So <laughs> look, I just thought, I thought these three tips would be perfect for anyone going through a bit of challenging time right now through COVID. So number one is, is gratitude. You've got to tap into gratitude every single day because it's so easy to focus on the negatives. It's so easy to focus on what we don't have and lack and that we can't go to the footy or we can't hang out with mates, but you've got to look at everything you do have. And all of us are in Australia, we've got it a lot better than most people. So gratitude will shift your mentality and your emotional state, help you feel better straight away. Okay. Number two would be just journaling or dot pointing down your frustrations or, or problems during this time and just listing three solutions for each challenge that you have because it's just a really practical and logical way of taking the frustration out of your mind and putting it onto paper and showing yourself that you do have options to move forward because we often feel trapped like we don't have options and that's when we start to feel depressed and, and anxious and overwhelmed so that's a really strong strategy to do every day and then last but not least is frame out a, a very 
um, a very solid routine. So even though you may not be able to leave the house, you still need to have purpose every single day. So every day have five to six goals, even if the goal is to just do a quick workout or speak to three friends or give two people a compliment, whatever it is. But if you've got a purpose and you can challenge yourself every day, you will feel so much better and you'll keep your mind occupied and, uh, and your soul on track. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Fantastic tips. Good work, Andy. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about how can people get in touch with you. Mm. Um, there's a website, I'm sure. And yeah. before we do that, mm. tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I was lucky enough to uh, to publish this book last year, yep. The Ultimate You, and it's mainly about mindset and it's about how to improve yourself from the inside out so you can be the ultimate version of you. And uh, it's got some great strategies, great tips, my story throughout as well. Yep. Um, and it's helping a lot of people. So it's been awesome to do that. And you can get this book in any good bookstores in the world. Yep. And uh, and also, if you want more about Ultimate You, just go to ultimateyou.com.au and everything you need is right there. Terrific. Well, yeah. thanks for joining us, mate. We'll Thank see you. you again next week. Awesome. And there you have it, Andy Anderson, the owner and CEO of Ultimate You. So stay with us. We're going to go to another quick little ad break, and we'll be back again. And Dipper's going to jump in the chair, and Andy's going to duck out. And welcome back everyone, thanks again for joining us. Now I'll keep reminding you all about down the bottom here with the questions and the comments. So leave them in there, Dipper and I at the very end are gonna take the time to uh, pick a few and we'll come back and we'll answer them at the end. But now we're gonna move into Dipper's vault. Tell us a little bit about this Dipper and why you wanted this as part of the show. <laughs> no, come on, don't lie, don't lie. Uh, no, thanks for putting uh, a Dipper's vault, but the question you asked me, uh, was name uh, five of the best players I played against um, yeah. and uh, I was very fortunate to play a, a long time at Hawthorne and, and I played the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, so three sort of decades and uh, some wonderful players I played against. But when I played, I first started on the halfback flank, so I, 
I, um, I played uh, a, a, a girl like Malcolm Bly, Jezelinko, all these great names were there. Then I, I was thrown on the wing. But um, do you want me to go from uh, top or bottom or...? No, what we'll yeah. do is we'll go from yeah. five. From we'll, five, we'll make, all right. our, we'll make our okay. way all the way back. So, okay. But before I do that, right, yeah. I want to ask you a question you about, about your coach yeah. at the time in Hawthorne. That's right. All right. I know Which you, one? I had John about... Kennedy Senior. Yeah. I had David Parker. Kennedy. And of course, Alan Jeans. Kennedy and, yeah. and Jeans. Let's and not, Jean. Sorry, Parko, but yeah. uh, we'll talk about the two there. But mostly yeah. here's a lot of uh, folklore through, ah. through football. And, as a 16-year-old kid walking into Hawthorne at the time, 16 and a half years of age, yeah. when you heard this voice, you go, wow, what's going on now? I was only a uh, you know, young, skinny kid, had no school, and uh, one thing I could do was put my head over the ball, and John Kennedy loved that. Yeah. He loved that fact, you know, because he, he personally was a very skillful player, but what he gave with his, uh, you know, with his heart, he just gave it all the time. And, that's what, and the way he spoke to his players back in the day, like, you know, just... Do something. Yeah. Don't think. Just do. You know, and and that's uh, and those words everyone knows about that. But when he spoke, even today in the in his mid eighties, he, he speaks today. He still, you know, verberates right through you because uh, he he um, he's got some great words and uh, mm -hmm. and, and he's just a mind Terrific. man. You know? so, so my old man when he played at Collingwood talks about Tommy Hafey. Yeah, and talks about Same that, thing. yeah that, that, yeah. that mentor father figure. Like him. Absolutely. Like well, we'll, we'll ask Johnny about it later with Platten as well. And yeah, then, it, was, it was Alan G. Well, yeah. I was about Alan G. Because he became our father. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he became a, a person that we trusted and would do anything for Alan G. You know, he treated like like his kids as well. Like he yeah. smacked me around the head a few times. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but then he gave me the love that I needed and uh, he, he put me in the corner a few times as well. Yeah, but that, that was the relationship. Yeah. You know? All right. Well, let's get All into right, let's the top five. And the number, wow. number five you sent through to me is, is yeah. Chris Chris. Main wearing, so yeah. we'll um, we'll quickly cross to a, a video for everyone to see some highlights. <laughs> maybe just cover off on on, on Chris Main and, and oh, what... well, I played. He played his first game on me when uh, we when we first played against the, the Eagles. It was at the Wacker, one of the first times we had an opportunity to, to play. And this young, good-looking kid, he kicked four goals on me on the first yeah. day. He could run, jump, skip, hop. He was a character, and we become really good friends off the field. Uh, but playing against him and yep. Matera on the wing or whatever, you know, is such a, a really strong player. And uh, he, he used to uh, wrap me up a few times. And this guy here, yeah. Alex Jezelinko, was Number amazing. Uh, yeah, look at this one here. Jezelinko, you'll be your day! Everyone knows that beautiful mark. But yeah. playing against Jezza as a halfback flanker, he never stays still as a half four. He just kept moving around. And, and, uh, and I learned a lot from, uh, uh, from uh, Alex. And, and speaking to Alex... Uh, uh, over the last six or seven months, and we both uh, made the um, uh, oh, a stand together, uh, the yeah. uh, multicultural team of the year, yep, yep. and uh, we had a great time that we had. Can, a, can I just say, did this footage looks a very long time ago, my yeah. friend? I can't remember you playing back with. Did you play back on TV? It was black and white. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that, well, that was '77, wasn't that grand final? Yeah, it yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. And uh, because we ended up uh, playing uh, in the grand final the year after. In in, uh, in 1978, when I won my first grand final with David Parker, but yeah. the old black and white destroyer was on the ground. Yeah, it? But look at the class this guy had. Yeah, he class, was, he? Oh, this now guy, this guy this here guy, is amazing. Yeah. Now, he was at Hawthorne. He, he was. Yeah. The whole family was at Hawthorne. Uh, Jeff Ablett, Kevin Ablett, Graham Ablett, uh, Lenny Ablett, and of course Gary Ablett Senior. I'm talking about here. Now he was just a, a superstar. I, I remember one night he came down. The first night he came, he was 16 years of age, and he beat his brother. Uh, Jeff Fabler by about three metres in a 100 metre sprint. And yeah. we thought, wow. what's going on here? Because uh, <laughs> he look play. at that. He was strong, yeah. powerful, balanced. Package. Uh, look, you know, we all know about Gary Abbott, but I ended up playing on him. Is this a mark, Dip? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I commentated that day for Channel 7, and that was a mark. <laughs> it was on Mother's Day, and uh, here we go. Up! He got in his hand, and there it is. He went down with it. That's a mark. Fair That's enough. a mark. Now, this is the big game there, of course, 89 grand final. But I played against Gary on a wing. And... Uh, yeah, that's the 89 grand final. We kicked yeah. nine goals straight that day. Nine goals straight. And uh, yeah, what a wonderful play he yeah. was. But he was so hard. He could either jump on your head, he could run away from you, uh, he could tackle hard. Uh, but uh, anyway, like Trevor Tackler, this kid here, Merv Nagel, you yeah, miss him dearly as well. Mm. And my mate there, David Halloran. Um, Merv Nagel was tough. When I played against uh, 
uh, uh, the Bombers, as well, the Timmy Watson will move Nagel, and we had some great battles together. I knew what I was going to get. It, it was fast, it was uh, brilliant, it was a good mark, it was tough. Yeah, yeah it, always try to sneak one in. But uh, when he's had the, his hands on the ball, he could do anything with it. But uh, he played for the Swans as well, as we see on screen there. But mm. he was just a wonderful player, but tough. Mm. tough. And, and, and Jake, yeah. Hawthorne and Essendon has some great games, mate. Oh, yeah. And we used to love it. But this great here, this man here, Dougie Hawkins, look at him. Look at that. It, he oh, was just a brilliant player. Uh, we played against each other about 16 times. He could run sideways as fast as he could run straight ahead. Him and EJ Witten, uh, of course, he, he beat uh, uh, Witten's uh, record by about uh, 10 games or so, the number seven. Yep. Just a beautiful play. A great mate of mine. He, he actually turned 60 next week, or the week after. We, we, uh, we share the same birthday as well. Uh, it was the 5th of May. But uh, yeah, he used to play in one wing, but. He'd, he'd never come over to your wig, you know, where you swap yeah, yeah, sides. Okay, yeah. And uh, at Windy Hill, was called the Dougie Hawkins wing. And uh, it, it, I said, come on, Dougie, come on the other side. He goes, no, I only play on one wing, Dipper, you know. <laughs> uh, but he's a very, he a very, a very good man. Actually, it's quite funny because um, he is a character we all know. Yeah. He, uh, the numbers back in the day uh, meant a lot to people, as they do today. And, and, um, and supporters used to wear uh, duffer coats. Mm. Yeah, you know, the old duffer coat, which is... Uh, uh, a fashion trend now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they used to have uh, you know, badges of players, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and and Dougie is so cute that the fact that uh, he saw one, a, a girl one day with number seven on the back of the duffer coat with the word Hawkins, he goes, hey, that's my name as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's Dougie. Oh, yeah. he, well, he's a great man. He's, uh, yeah. he's involved down in, in White Plate Bali Football Club. Yeah. He's, he's uh, back a smash for the Cobras down there. and He's a great man, Dougie. He comes and watch a few games of yeah. us. And the wonderful player. Oh, wonderful player. Terrific, terrific. Now, Dip, uh, we're going to... Um, thanks for sharing that, by yeah, the way. No worries. Um, pleasure. It was a great little segment. And next yeah. week, we'll... We might open up something else, your top five or your top three. Yeah, yeah, and we'll, yeah. um, we'll have a bit of play of that every week. But uh, one last question before we, we move on yeah. and, 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 and um, proceed. Is there a game that stands out for you in, in your <sighs> career? Like, I know you've got the typical premierships and that, but there's a yeah. game that, that sticks out for you that you think, yeah. Well, uh, I, I always say, because uh, people see you play footy and on TV and all that sort of stuff, and, and that's what this show's about. It's about you know, how you handle yourself in the situation. Now, the thing is, you have a lot of down games, you know, and, and when you have an uptime, you know, there might be 10 or 15 games in, in your career, you think, oh, wow, I kicked six goals one day against Collingwood off the wing. That's a great day. But there was, um, I, I think the 89 grand final for me was the fact that Hawthorne had played seven grand finals in a row, and this is their eighth grand final. Yeah. And it was unheard of, right? Uh, and we had never won back to back before. And Hawthorne still had to prove themselves. And we won 83 against the Bombers, lost 84 and 85. We won against uh, the uh, Carlton in 86. So, uh, they beat us in 87, and, and then we beat Melbourne. So that one to me, to be known as uh, first ever, Hawthorne's first ever back to back. It was like Graham Arthur when he captained the first ever, uh, you know, uh, 61 side to win the first premiership, you know. And now the Hawks have done three in a row and whatever. Mm. I would think that game, and everyone talks about that game yep. for what the game was for both Geelong and Hawthorne. But to come off that ground, <laughs> sort of come off the ground, but coming off that ground knowing that you won back to back, it's a, Very special. It's, it is special, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you mentioned, uh, what are the three words you don't want to hear on the MCG, Dave? <laughs> the three words you don't want to hear on the MCG on grand final day is when the ball's in the air and you look up and you know our game, you can't look left or right. It's yours, Dipper! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, footy, mate, you know. Because yeah, yeah, when, uh, when, uh, when the ball's up, and that's why you train. You don't train because, or you train because obviously marking, kicking, whatever, you get better at it. But it's the voices that you hear of your teammates. And a, and, and a big game like that, when someone says, it's yours, Dipper, you just trust them. Yep. And you go back, and, uh, and I did, and uh, well... Hey, folklore, anyway, yeah. I'm still here. That's, that's the main it. Thing. That's yeah. it. But just quickly on that, yeah. you, you got it was serious. Yeah, well, it was serious. I mean, the day that you know a lot of players go out there and uh, and and do what they do for their club, and 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 times one change going f uh, forward either because uh, yeah. you only get one chance of playing footy. And how much do we miss playing footy now? Yeah, that's right. And people complain about oh, you know, I, it's a you know. 
it's, it's, it's hard training, whatever, but all, everyone just wants to get back to football. It's like having a job five weeks ago and all of a sudden you complain about, you know, you're not getting paid enough or whatever, uh, you know, you need a break, all of a sudden you haven't got a job. Mm. You know, everyone is just, you know, it's we nice. need to connect and we need a job and um, as much as we love playing footy. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to now just take another little quick break and we're going to get on the line from um, all the way over in South Australia. Yeah, to Your catch old, up with them, mate. Yeah, and, the rat. And, and while we're talking about breaks, now this is our first show. Yep. If you've got a, a product out there that you want to help us, uh, you know, fill in those little breaks, just... Uh, just contact us at uh, outsidethelockerroom.com.au. Yeah, it'd be fantastic to get a couple of sponsors on board, but uh, we'll come back after this. Uh, no, no, I think we're still going here. Yeah, oh. the, the boys are trying oh. to get Johnny Platt now. This is the oh, first yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I just tell a bit of the story about, um, you know, yep. how Outside the Locker Room started. I mean, you know, you, five oh, years ago, you, you decided... To, to start helping people because you needed help and you know the processes. So, yeah, yeah. I, I guess the, the quick version of it, Dipper, is yeah. uh, I spent four years at Carlton Football Club. I was diagnosed halfway through my career with, with depression. Uh, we Yeah, what was that? I mean, what was depression? Right then, yeah. We've come a long way. We, we knew what it is. I didn't even know what the word was. No. Uh, and for me to be diagnosed at that time, I was the fifth player in my family to play AFL football. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, my cousin, Shane O'Brien. Just go through that. Don't rush through that. Just go through that. Go on. <laughs> well, my great-grandfather played over 100 games at the Bulldogs. Right. My grandfather played over 100 games in 1954 Premiership at the Bulldogs. The only Premiership, right? Yeah. Well, the second there. Oh, like, second there, of course. Yeah, my apologies. And uh, my father's Alan Butch Edwards. For the yeah. diehard Richmond Collingwood fans out there would know uh, the big washed-up surfer, number yeah. eight, uh, played for <laughs> Collingwood and, and Richmond and finished at the Bulldogs. He played 100 and nearly 20 games in total. And my cousin Shane O'Brien. So Shane played nearly 230 games at football Collingwood. as well. Yeah, Collingwood. Started off at Brisbane and then went to the went to the uh, the Pies. But yeah, I was drafted 2005. Spent, I played five AFL games, five really good AFL games. <laughs> uh, you but, played the uh, first day of uh, of, of Juddy's game. Yeah, my it? debut was Judd's game, and I was telling Juddy all week to come and watch me, not him. <laughs> I think I got that Hundred thousand people watched yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We should try and get Juddy on actually one week and have a, have a we chat will. about that. We will. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, mate, so I was diagnosed during my career, which was just, it was scary. I, I, I was frustrated. I was confused. I was, I was emotional. I was crying in my car on the way to training. I didn't want the likes of Favola and Juddy and, and these guys. Kuda. Kuda. Yeah. He was my first captain. I didn't want them to know that I was crying down the road. Uh, so for me, it was about holding on to it, not talking about it. And ultimately, that is what got me to a really difficult stage in my life after my career when it finished. And then I spent four years post that really just trying to find my way where I became lost. And unfortunately, it led me to, a, to an attempt on my own life one day. And I was fortunate to still have great family in my life and friends around me. And they helped me get into a program where I rebuilt myself. And that's how the locker room started through that transition. Yeah. And five years ago, we worked with 14 clubs. Now we've worked with nearly 300 across Australia. So. Amazing. And just about family, I mean, you were f sort of scared to go home to your dad and, and mum and say, oh, I guess, well, I've got a thing called depression. Yeah, you thought you to get a, a, a smack of... Yeah, it was. I, mean, I, 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 I grew up in, a, in a, a, well, back then it was more rural, kind of. Yeah. It's a, it's a farm. Mum and dad live in a farm just outside of Back of Smarsh. And uh, it was just an environment that we didn't actually know about. And I'm sure you would have been the same dip when you were younger, um, you know. And did players have mental illness back in your day? You, well, who knows? Who knows, you know. Yeah. But these days we see players now coming out. All yeah, which time. is a great sign. That's what the show is all about, just getting out there, getting the message out there that you can get help. And so about help, what about our great mate over here? Uh, are we going to have a bit of a break, guys, are we? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The guys are going like this, they're going yeah. like this, they're going like this. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. What's happening, boys? You know? They're saying wind it up. So we better wind it up. So we'll come back after this with a, a legend of yeah. AFL and a good mate of Dippers and of Johnny Platten.
All right, everyone, welcome back, and thanks again for joining us for the SL Locker Room TV show. We've had a great show so far. So we far, so good. Slip up shit, mate. Um, but now we're joined by an absolute AFL legend star. South Australian South, champion. South Australian champion. You've got some stats in that there you want to run I know, I've got a lot of stats, but I just want to let you know how we got to Hawthorne, right? In 1984, <laughs> Uh, uh, Russell Green, myself and Jerma Brereton uh, got in the All-Australian team and were asked to go to Ireland to play uh, this new game called uh, you know, Gaelic Football, or International Rules they call it now. Anyway, Johnny Platten uh, also was in the side uh, and uh, there were Jared Healy and uh, Brad Hardy and uh, Stephen Coonhan, Craig Bradley and anyway, the boys come over from Adelaide and anyway, uh, the club Hawthorne says, see if you can get Johnny Platten to come over and play for Hawthorne while they're in Ireland. So we did. We picked him up, put him up against the wall. <laughs> he said, if you don't come to Hawthorne, we're going to bash you and cut your hair. <laughs> hey, Johnny, great to, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to see you. We can actually see you. You can't see us. But I just want to go through some stats. He uh, was born and bred in Elizabeth, a family of nine, nine yep. Uh, yep. and uh, just a superstar. Uh, he was really the only footballer out of, out of, the, uh, out of the nine who uh, sort of ended up playing uh, in the VFL. Um, uh, but also um, with VFL back in those days. In 1986, uh, he came over two years after we bashed him. He's in 84 in Ireland. <laughs> he ended up playing nearly, uh, well, it was 113 games for uh, uh, Central Districts, the yep. Bulldogs up there, and uh, I, I think close to 258 games uh, for Hawthorne, uh, four best and fairest, a tour at each club, Hall of Famer, uh, the Brownlow, of course, with uh, Tony Lockett. Uh, he actually sat next to me the, the, the night I won the Brownlow. But anyway, Get enough of all that. We want to hear from you. Uh, <laughs> Ratman, uh, Johnny Platten, thanks for joining us on the show, my friend. G'day, boys. How are you? It's love to be here. Yeah, terrific. John, thanks for joining us, mate. I really appreciate it. So maybe just take us back to where it all started in South Australia. And it is what Dipper saying yeah. even true? Because I know he likes to add a little bit of mayo on top of <laughs> That's it. That's true. <laughs> no, it's very, it was very true. Uh, family of nine. I'm the lucky number seven. Uh, there's uh, five boys and three girls. So yep. um, I sort of, we, we all played sports and, and uh, we all did our own thing as well. But... Um, it was, yeah, I, I finished up going on to play in the AFL. Other brothers played in the Sanford League, uh, local footy, girls played a lot of netball, uh, basketball and that type of thing. So, um, no, born and bred in Elizabeth, I'm very proud of it. So, and then, um, yeah, that's where it all started from. Yeah, terrific. Now, when you first came over to Victoria, well, what are your earliest memories of, of joining the Hawthorne Football Club? Oh, God, when you just walk into the rooms and there's photos of the... The, the, the great men of the of the club, uh, John Kennedy, uh, Senior, uh, Lee Matthews, Peter Knights, all these types of blokes. There was photos of all these great blokes, and you walked in straight away knowing that there was something special about the club. Um, yeah, and walking into it in '86, um, the, the 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 team had been playing in the grand finals since '83. So you walked into a, a club which was already playing finals, and your expectation when they came to a club like Hawthorne, was to play finals. And that was just, that was something which I was uh, very much wanted to do. Uh, in my first six years at Hawthorne, I played in five grand finals to win four of them. So pretty special <laughs> Not bad, times. Mate. Oh, oh, he was one of the teacher's pet. He was Jeansy's pet. Oh, Jeansy <laughs> loved him. Yeah. Jeez, but just because I worked a bit harder than you. Yeah, oh, is that right? right? Is that right? Yeah. No, um, Johnny, um, the show's all about, uh, you know, Family connections. Uh, tell us about your, your family, how you grew up in Elizabeth. It was a pretty tough year and, and, and a tough time. It you was. Yeah, look, as too. I said, um, you know, there was nine of us. Mum and Dad made, made eleven. We lived in a three-bedroom housing trust house with you know, nine of us and one toilet, one shower. So <laughs> it was it was a complete mess. It was out of control, but loved every minute of it. Um, and Jimmy Barnes was down there. the road, didn't he? Who's that? Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy Barnes. Oh, he was. I was in the Grove at, at Elizabeth Grove. He was in Elizabeth North, so right look, he would, would have been five or six k's away from each yeah, other. Right so, up. but that type of thing. Uh, my father died when I was only eighteen. He was forty-nine. So, Mum sort of took us all in, and and she 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 was fabulous. And Dipper, you 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 know Kath, yeah, very well. And and she was an amazing lady. Uh, bring up nine of us by herself and. But we had great support around that time. Yeah, we had 
lots of people, lots of friends, cousins and aunties and uncles all around us as well. So that sort of made it a little bit more special as well. So football is part of your life. Uh, I mean, you took on yep. you know, the size that you are, the little man, little rat man, little mouse. You, you used to get under the packs and... Uh, and love it. Uh, and, yeah, he loved it. He loved it. But, um, so your footy career started fairly early? And then you, you yeah, know, yeah, you know. yeah. I was six years old starting at Elizabeth Football Club. That was sort of the <laughs> club which all my other brothers played. Uh, mum and dad sort of ran the canteen, ran the office, and all, that, all sorts of things. So, all my other brothers played there as well. Um, I got there, I, fit, I started when I was six, finished when I was about 15, and went to Central Districts in 79. And then, lucky enough to play under 17s with Centrals in 79. Uh, went to Till Cup in 1980. Uh, we went to Perth. We won the championships over there with blokes like Kernahan, Bradley and mm. Motley and, and uh, all these famous names which have, have played now. Yeah, now, yeah. Uh, we won that carnival in 1980 and I was fortunate enough to uh, play my first league game at Central Districts in 1981. I, I was I just turned 18. So a little kid, a little skinny kid, I think I was 61 kilos and about <laughs> five foot five. So I was a jump jockey dipper, which you would have loved. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't, you haven't grown since, but you know that. But uh, well, one Sorry, thing about him, too, he loved his car. Elizabeth was an area mm-hmm. where, where Holdens were made, of course, you yeah. know. He loved his, his Holdens, didn't you, mate? Yeah. And you still I loved do? him. I remember I love, you bought well, the Peter been... Brock. I mean, you, you put the Peter yep. Brock special with the with the cash that you took off Carlton. That's another day. <laughs> that we'll talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I I did have the Peter Brock Commodores. I, I loved them. I'm a Brocky fan, and I hold a man born bred in Elizabeth as well. Yes. Um, and at the minute, I am I am a, an ambassador for Peter Page Holdens, which is okay. up Elizabeth's way as well. So they've been fantastic to me. I still drive Commodores. Uh, I love them a bit. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, and it's a bit sad the way that, um, that things have gone back over here with Holden. So they pulled the pin on over here in Australia. Uh, but unfortunately, we'll, we'll just you know keep on grinding at that and hopefully that uh, we keep moving on from that as well. So, Johnny, outside the locker room, is a, is a charity working with mental health. Now, back in, back in your day, Dip and I talk about this very, very closely and, yeah. and personally uh, just about every week. And... What's your recollection, if anything, back in the in your playing days of, of, of mental health? Did you did you know what it was? You had ever heard, ever heard of depression, anxiety, stress? Did you experience any of that? Um, no, not really. We, we probably didn't hear a lot of it back in our day. You know, especially during the eighties. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a thing where uh, you might help me out here. Is that you know you you just copped it and you went on with it and yeah. and blokes sort of turned you away and said you know. Move Stop on, yeah, yeah, just, with it. yeah, move on, yeah, that type yeah. of thing. So, well, you're drinking water, come on, mate. You just, yeah, you yeah only, that's right. You only run twenty k's. Peer group pressure was was big, I suppose, but uh, yeah. but the end of it, it wasn't much around. But certainly now, it, it has created a uh, a huge thing about football life in general as well. Yep. Um, so it's it's great to hear you folks promote it and and try and get to the bottom of it and raise money for it and so that we can find a cure for this. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. We appreciate that. And Johnny, what about your concussion situation? I mean, I know that you've had you've been locked out a few times. I mean, has it worried you since finished playing football? Oh, for sure. Like um, you know, uh, I'm 57 now, and um, um, you know, hearing what, uh, what what's going on and what's what's what scientists have, have tried to be doing now with potty farmer and okay. that type of things come out now it is a bit scary yeah you know, that when we first heard that the first people on the phone was was my kids and asking me dad are you okay and uh, it was it was scary hearing hearing those mm. types of uh, uh news about polly and and look at the minute i still get headaches um you know loss of memory at times where you forget things or you put down things that you can't remember uh, but headaches is my main thing that i I, I get some bad headaches and uh, I just have to sit down, relax, and have a couple of tablets, and to to hopefully the uh, the headache does go away. So where's all that at, at now, John? For you? Um, oh, look, it's still with the lawyers and things like that, and you know we're still going through tests. I, I get tested pretty much nearly every year, um, MRI test, uh, computer test, and things like that. So. Look, it's it's all in all in the hands of the lawyers, and they're all, all putting it all together for us. And and uh, look, it's I think it's going to go on, you know, for quite a while. But at this stage, it's all in good hands. Um, hopefully that uh, you know they they find a cure, and 
Yeah. And I probably put my hand up to this because whatever it is, I've had 30 odd uh, concussions wow. and I want to find out now if, if something's going to happen in five or 10 years time. So if I can get out there and, and try and uh, make an awareness of, of, of what's going to happen, um, I'm, I'm very much happy to do that. We're talking about CTE, isn't it? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. 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 yeah, correct. Well, we actually played the game in Japan. And uh, he actually won uh, uh, this magnificent uh, twenty thousand dollar. Yeah, what was it? Uh, no, I just won the steroid. You're because the one because you who won the pack. Who went over to Japan. I won the car, but you won the the. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah but the, you you played terrible. You, you just went over a week before, promoted yourself. I think as a, I think your memory's going. I think hello. I think I think. And then you won the I car. I think you've had too many knocks. Hello, hello. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Now. Uh, you know, uh, you've got a business now. Just a little bit about your business. Uh, it's a safety business. Um, we've got a business here in, in Adelaide and also in Melbourne. Um, look, it, it's, it's been, been great. I've been involved in that now for probably over 13 years. Uh, before then, I was tied up with pubs and that. Pubs so, and that, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a great little business. It's all about, you know, being, being safe at your workplace. It's, it's funny because I'm, I'm, I'm in this... I'm in this company now where before yeah. I was playing footy, I just my head knocked off and yeah. I wasn't very safe about it. But but now uh, yeah, it's a great business. Um, the safety as I hub. said, uh, the safety right. hub well, here in Adelaide and also yeah, in Melbourne. Hub, which, yeah, yeah. We, we, which do with safety. Uh, I asked that question about. because you you, uh, you employ people and life has changed within five weeks, mate. How are you coping with all the changes? Uh, not too bad. Like, we're going okay. Um, safety never stops. Um, you know, we, there's still construction people working, still warehouse people working, um, guys on the roads, uh, road work guys. Yeah. And also, we also deal in a lot of uh, food companies like Ian Chickens and uh, Thomas Foods and also Adelaide Poultry. So right. there's a lot of scope there for us to do with a lot of uh, disposable gear as well, hair nets That's and, good. and lab coats and, and um, disposable gloves as well. So you're going so, to right, you have to put some people off. Hey, behind no. you, mate, there's the glory days. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, you I like think it? I'm in that. Yeah, I like yeah, you're, that. You yeah. are, of course, you're, you're in everything. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But uh, look, it's not about me, Johnny, but uh, I just no, want to thank nice. you so much for being part of the show, my yeah. friend. So just, just finally, uh, John, they've got a, a couple of quick questions here. Oh, OK, well, just, one, yeah. just to cap things off. So who's the best player that you ever played? on not with played on oh, robert Cameron. harvey robert harvey yeah yeah that was pretty simple uh, he's a great man worked his uh, um he worked his, that's all right <laughs> yeah his ass off sorry uh but no a fabulous guy and and really a hard working type bloke the joker at your club the uh, man. at hawthorne at hawthorne yeah john kennedy jr no Dip, doubt. is that right no doubt yeah, right. No doubt. It was a shocker. It was a shocker. <laughs> yeah. well, what about the best sledge? Keeping it PG rated. Uh, ke- best sledge. Um, you, uh, oh, I don't know. You hear so many, but mm. I remember a day when Tony Shaw was trying to tag Paul Hudson on the half four flank, and I think Hutto kicked nine on him, and Shuri was at him all day and all day. <laughs> and all I always remember is telling Shuri, you just keep mouthing off because every time you do, he kicks a goal on you. So he thinks I'm yeah. kicking nine on that day. So, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't working. <laughs> um, it was a, it was a white line fever. Who, who had that at Hawthorne the most? Oh, God, all of us. I think it's uh, we were a great bunch of lovable blokes. We, we, we played it hard on and off the ground and uh, we had some great <laughs> times. But I suppose Dermot, I think he's a sort of bloke that I'm glad that he played for Hawthorne for, for most of his career. Even with his chicken legs. Yeah. 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 He, a great bloke off and great bloke on, but when he went on the field, he was, yeah. God, you never got in his way. So no. he, he was always handy to have around in the place. Do, do you still talk a lot to the, to the boys, John? Um, yeah, well, I try to. Yeah, look, we, as Dipper would know, we, we try and ring each other, um, yeah. you know, once or twice uh, every two or three months, I suppose. If yeah, we so hello, we're in Adelaide, we, we catch up and whatever. Yeah, have you spoken to Dunstall? Functions. He doesn't talk to anyone. Uh, Jace, no, yeah. he's around. I know that uh, Jace has got a big chip <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> we, we, we certainly oh, get we love it. We that. just love telling him that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love it, yeah. yeah. But no, at footy function is pretty important. And things like this, um, yeah. you know, radio interviews, TVs interviews, and we have some some great chats. It's always great to catch up because I, I love the blokes to bits. You know, yeah. you know, spent 12 years with them, won four premierships with them. Uh, we had a great time. And one word about Jeansy, my friend. 
Oh, legend. He was he was my father. He was our father. He was uh, a great knowledge of football. He was a great leader. Um, but best of all, he was just a great bloke. Yeah. Like you, my friend. Thank you so much, uh, Johnny, for uh, catching up with us. And uh, you were the teacher's pet. Johnny, no. what are you doing? <laughs> Johnny, you're Get going really well, mate. You're going really well. Jibba, don't yeah. think you're a good player because you're not. <laughs> I love your work. Dude. All right, so that'll love be the end of the family, mate. Love you Good and uh, talk soon. That's Johnny love Payton, you, everybody. Yeah. Superstar of the game. Yeah, I, what, a, what a champion. Oh, man. Well, football-wise, he, he just went in hard. He could run all day uh, and just kept going and kept going. Now, he played Rover, right? He'd be kicking, you know, two, three, four goals. He loved the goal, like all of us do. But he was a, a, a superstar of the game and become a Brownlow medalist and, uh, and also a McGlary medalist over, over in Adelaide. I think he played for um, uh, South Australia in a, a back in the day, state it's game, 15 broken. times. I think it was 17. Or 17. 17 and yeah. then um, and, and played well. And also, um, also uh, all Australian four times, as I mentioned uh, in A4 when we met him over there. But when he was playing for um, when he was playing uh, for uh, South Australia, I, I played for Victoria, Gary Ayres, and a few of the guys. You know, anyone had a go at him, yeah. we just hey, don't touch him, all right? You know, because <laughs> he just say, congratulations, boys, you're playing for Victoria. But if one of our boys hurts Johnny Platten, you know, protect him, you know. No, it was all good. It's terrific. Now, we thanks John again for, yeah. for joining us. And next week, can we announce who might be joining us next week, Did Well, Special we've got week. a few on, on the go. I think Matthew yeah. Richardson is going to join us next week. Uh, and uh, we've got a few guys on, on, on the go. But, uh, look, this is our first show. Really enjoying it. But the whole idea about this show is about connection with people. I know we talk about the old days and whatever, but that's what we've got. It's about, you know, connection, you know, when... And today, is the way that we live in today, especially the last five weeks, I think a lot of people, and, and, and hope they are, are thinking about how can I better myself, you know, because they've given us time to think. Yeah, definitely. What we're going to do is going to jump to a quick little break again, yeah. Dip, and then finally we're going to come back and, and say, say goodbye to everyone. But oh, come on. Please, yeah, we'll if you want to stick around, you can more than welcome to... Like a telephone, throw money <laughs> <laughs> with these sponsors, come on. That's right. So as you see, there's little ad breaks in between. We love the opportunity to uh, work alongside some sponsors. So reach out on our website uh, and we can have a chat yeah, from, from there. Yeah, thank you. Um, but now, we do, as I remember at the start of the show, leave your comments, your last final chance to leave a question. We'll take two minutes break. Dipper and I have a look at these questions, pick the best ones, and we'll come back right after this.
Hey, welcome back, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining in tonight for our launch. That was of so much Solar. fun. It's been great. Isn't it? The launch of our show. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week, and then if they want us around more, we'll keep coming back. Oh, we'll keep coming back every Thursday night, six o'clock. Uh, and uh, once again, if you're out there, uh, a lot of guys are actually texting us to say, "Hey." In those little black, uh, black spots you have, you need some responses. So happy to talk to anyone. Just uh, write a little note. Happy to give a plug around football club. This is what this is all about. It's about getting the message out to football clubs out there for both women and young men uh, about uh, how we can help you uh, because everyone can get help when you're down and out. Yeah. And just yeah. a shout out to everyone who left questions earlier. Yeah. So there's a couple that I've picked up. Uh, from that list. The first one is is from Colin McCarty, who's a, a, one of our a people up in Queensland. Yeah. His question is that, now the five that you mentioned before you've played against, yeah. is there any modern day players today that would match that top five? And if so, who, who would they be? Well, I think Dusty Martin would be one. Yeah. Because Dusty's got everything. He's got speed, he's got strength, he's got endurance, he's got everything, you know. And he's a superstar of the game. Does a complaint to the umpire. He's a brown line medalist, you know. I think he really matches uh, uh, Abelou Jr., you know, his, his old man. <laughs> what a play he's turned out to be. Two brown line medals and, and premierships and so. Um, yeah, you know, I, I want to see, I want to see um, uh, Dugowie. I reckon Jagowi could be the superstar of the game, yeah. you know, because he had a great first year, had some injuries last year, whatever. But there's a lot, there's a lot more. I, I forgot because I haven't seen footy for a while. Yeah, it's been that long. It's been a long. Yeah. 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 Uh, hopefully we get football back, and not just yeah. footy, all sport. Yeah, because... Uh, no, we want sport. General, sport yeah. brings people together. Yeah. I mean, as a young fella, I had a, a very bad stutter, and I do stutter at times, but because I was very nervous and that sort of stuff. But sport gave me an opportunity to, to uh, just embrace what I did and, and become confident about myself and, and now I make a, a living out of speaking. I don't know how, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> the other question we had on there was actually, how do I get involved with yeah, this other locker room? That's and right. The best way to get involved is to jump on our website, which is www.otlr.org.au. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can simply just click on the links there. Whereas on Facebook, visit our page and all the information about our programs on there. Dip. And I'm you know, I've got a great idea. I've just come up with it. When the footy's back on, on, online, yep. Uh, maybe we can we'll take the show out to uh, some, some footy clubs out there. We can do this show. Yeah, we'll take your training first, and then, uh, and then uh, we'll put the show on and, and, and get some of the, the local legend, because every football club's got a story. Yeah, you know? definitely. You know, back in the day when someone kicked the goal to win the grand final or so, yeah. whatever. But that's what we're all about. So uh, thanks for joining us. And, uh, yeah, thank and Jake, you. Jake, great job, mate, what you've done with uh, Outside the Locker Room and... Uh, how we met, and, and uh, you've really allowed me to become part of your uh, your gang. And uh, we've got a TV show. Well, I've got a TV show called uh, Dipper's Destinations. It is a travel show. And uh, we just spent, just prior to uh, uh, the, the corona, uh, we just spent a, a week, no, 10 days, days actually, yeah. cruising from Perth to Caratha. And we talked about mental health. We stopped in communities, and we had so much fun. But also, the community got around. We've got kids singing kids playing footy, uh, we talked about you know, the, the issues that uh, live in regional, so that'll be on uh, Channel 7 mate, very shortly, so we'll keep you up to date with that one. Yeah. We're very busy, we but we've got no work. <laughs> That's right. And final messages, everyone, thank you all again for, for joining us tonight. We'll be back next week, Thursday, at 6pm, and with our special guest and also another local can we, uh, can we thank the boys? And we also thank the, thanks the boys who've helped us out. We've got two great production uh, men in the room tonight that have donated their so time. So, Mark, where are you from again, Mark? MBS, MBS, yeah. and, and mixed and, media, and mixed media is uh, is Betty Boy, and they're putting up their time they uh, for us. We really appreciate it, boys. Yeah, we really do. We yeah. can't thank you guys enough, and we look forward to working with you all more. And for the, another reminder of the clubs that are involved with us in the locker room and have us at your club, and in the past have done so. Uh, if you need some help, you need some support. Remember our downloadable app. We've got a free app that we we promote to download at our clubs. Uh, you can message our team through there. So please take the time to do that, reach out, and be more than happy to, to help. But for more information, jump on our website, and we look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully, next week. So tell all your friends uh, how great Dipper is in, uh, in this and show. And Jackie Boy. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. See you then. Thank you.